Are you a lot of sniggling and giggling? <laughs> Could be worse, right? <laughs> Good morning, church. Morning. Good morning. Let's uh, stand for prayer and then we'll, we'll have our Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Father, we thank you for the privilege that you have provided for us this morning to gather the church in the church house. We still have the freedom and the security and, and, and the peace that you have provided for us as the body together. We realize that we are in an ever darkening world, but you have called us to be salt and light to this darkening world. And by your grace and your mercy and who and what you are, we will continue to take it one step, one foot at a time. And we will continue to give you the honor and the glory that is yours. For all of this, Father, we ask in the powerful, matchless name of our Lord, our Savior, and our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, that he might be honored and glorified. And all of us together say, Amen. 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 I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Well, let's try when we all get to heaven. It's number 78. Thank you. You're welcome.
is that all you have? Just that one? That was all she had. Her. <laughs> she had a busy day yesterday. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. You may be seated. Yeah. <laughs> Jay, thanks for being with us here today, the two of you. It's always good to see you. Good to be here. I uh, wish you could have been here yesterday, but everything went well by God's grace. Good. Whatever you can get here, it's always a welcome time to see. You. So thank you for being with us. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> we. Uh, we buried my son yesterday, and uh, we had a celebration of life. And uh, so we're we're still kind of anyway. We'll get through this too, won't we? The word of God is alive and powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, mm -hmm. piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Let's open God's word this morning to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. If you will, please, let's, uh, let's start at, at, at verse 12, chapter 4. We, uh, we looked yesterday at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we went through the first 20 verses of uh, chapter 15. We were focused primarily on Paul writing to uh, the Corinthians reference to physical death. They uh, were having a problem not only with physical death, but they were focusing on the uh, the resurrection, resurrection of the dead, and of course Paul was writing to the church, the body of Christ, and and today, this morning we're looking at First Thessalonians, and I want us to kind of put it together as it were. Um, I'm using the iPad because I'm having high problems and uh, so and if it weren't for my better half tech, techie person over there who gave me this blessed heart and wife it, it makes it a lot easier for me to see. But anyway the fourth chapter reads as follows, and I guess if we had to subtitle this, it, it would be a brotherly and orderly life. And and Paul is writing to the church at Thessalonica, and he says to them. But concerning bodily love, brotherly love, he says, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you do so And indeed, 
you do so toward all the brethren who are in Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, <clears throat> that you aspire to live a quiet life, to mind your own business, to work with your hands as we commanded you. What's Paul saying to them? He's saying to them, live a quiet, peaceful life as long as you can. I believe he's emphasizing what we would call meekness, gentleness. You notice I didn't say shyness and weakness. I said gentleness and meekness. So what's the difference? Gentleness and meekness is power and strength under control. It's not shyness and it's not weakness. In other words, he's saying to them, you know Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. And you know that it is to your advantage, speaking to us as the body of Christ, to live as orderly a life as possible. But that does not mean that we are shy and weak. In other words, we're not to be used as uh, doorsteps. So he goes on to say that you may walk <clears throat> properly toward those who are outside and that you may lack nothing. Now, he goes uh, down a little further and he says, but I do not want you to be ignorant. Now, let me, let me I'm having fun with this thing. <laughs> Uh, let, allow me to use the term ignorant. That, that's not something that is insulting. It simply means that I do not want you to lack knowledge in a given area. There are multitudes of things that we, as the body, are ignorant of or have a lack of knowledge of. For example, I'm not an electrician. Uh, I'm not about to do anything that pertains to electricity because electricity will bite you. <laughs> There's no question about that. So when it comes to things like that and the knowledge thereof, I, I'm, I'm going to make contact with a couple of friends that I know that are master electricians. So that's what he's saying. I do not want you to be uninformed or ignorant, brethren concerning those who have fallen asleep. Now we said yesterday, and we say again, fallen asleep deals with physical death. And he's saying to them, I want you to be informed about those who, <coughs> those who have died physically. <coughs> Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. He's saying at that time that he's bringing them to a point where they had just come out of paganism. And he said, I don't want you to be sorrowful about where you were. I want you to be mindful of where you are. And this is where we are. We are mindful of the fact that those of us that know Christ received as Savior, we uh, will see them again. And uh, 
the separation between us and them is temporal. It's a time of just <clears throat> knowing that they have gone home ahead of us. So that's what he's saying. <clears throat> but he's saying also, those who have no hope. Well, who are the ones that have no hope? Those that don't know Christ as Lord and Savior. Those who have the misconception that once we leave this body physically, it's over. No, it's not over. What we decide here determines where we will be when we get there. And we will get there. <clears throat> For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Christ, in Jesus. Those who have died knowing Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. He's beginning to focus on the rapture of the church. And he's laying the foundation, as it were. For if we believe in Jesus, if we believe that Jesus died, which he did, if we believe that he was raised again, which he was, even so, God will bring with him, Christ Jesus, those who sleep in Christ Jesus or who have died in Christ Jesus. So the, then he says, for this we say to you, we being Paul the Apostle, to you who are the recipients of the church. By the word of the Lord, the scriptures, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep in Christ. He is speaking of the fact that the Christ will return. He will come to get the body of Christ, which is us. And he's saying to them, those who have died that know Christ as Savior, even though they are asleep, when Christ comes, they will rise first because they are in Christ. What's going to come out of that? The resurrection body and the soul and the spirit will be united with the resurrection body. So that's why we can say we'll see them again. We will see them again. In the meantime, those of us who are here, the heart gets heavy. And there are times of, of <clears throat> great grieving. There are times when your heart hurts. <clears throat> and there is something about grieving. The memories will come unannounced. They will come at times when, when things are quiet and peaceful. And you think in your mind, I wish I had said, but then again, it really isn't necessary because we can at one day say what we wanted to say. For the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a shout. He's coming to get the church. With the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ 
will rise first. Then, we who are alive and remain shall be caught up. That's the resurrection. Mm -hmm. In the Greek, the word is hapazo. And I've heard folks say, well, there is no resurrection in the Bible. Really? <laughs> Nothing speaks of the rapture. Really? Not according to what we just read. Mm -hmm. It says, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. Who is them? Those that are alive, that have died and have risen first. Mm -hmm. And he has come to get the church. And those of us who are alive will be caught up and changed. So we go home with them. He said to the apostles, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in me, believe also in God. I go to prepare a place for you. For in my Father's house are many dwelling places. <clears throat> I will come again. And you will be unto me. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And those <clears throat> we will always be with the Lord. You will notice he said to meet the Lord in the air. We will go to him. The next time he comes, the second advent, he touches the ground at the Mount of Olives, mm -hmm. which is where he ascended from. And the angel said, why do you stand here, men of Galilee, looking up? This same Jesus that you see will again ascend here. He's going to come back to the Mount of Olives. But in this instance, he has come from the church. And this time when he comes for the church in the air, nobody else is going to see that but the church. When he comes the second time, everybody's going to see it. Because he touches the earth. <clears throat> In the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words, with these words, with these words, with the word. How much time do we have? I wouldn't dare insult you by giving you a date, but I can tell you this. We should be, and if we are ready to go when he comes, it doesn't matter when he comes. Amen. We know why he's coming, and we know he's coming. That's right. So that means we must be ready. Amen. And if we're not ready, you're already too late. <laughs> because by the time we realize, or they realize, that the church has been raptured, we're gone. Mm -hmm. In a twinkling of an eye. Yeah. I can't imagine that speed. In a twinkling of an eye. <clears throat> Comfort each other with these words. Let's bow together, shall we? <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this time. And we thank you for your inerrant, immutable word. We thank you for who and what we are as the body of Christ. And we know that I, without a doubt that we are who and what we are because of who and what you are. 
what we have as the body of Christ, so great salvation, is nothing that we need to earn, nor that we deserve. It's not who and what we are. It's who and what you are. It's the atoning work of the Christ on the cross that we are the recipients thereof. We thank you, Father, for this, this time together, this time to look into your immutable, <coughs> inerrant word. And we thank you, Father, that you would undergird and strengthen us and grant us the privilege of taking this portion of your word and making it a source of challenge and blessing. We pray you would enable Father to allow us to meditate and concentrate and absorb and retain on your word and us being the recipients of so great salvation. For all of this, Father, we ask in the powerful and matchless name of our Lord, our Savior, and our Redeemer, of Jesus Christ, that he might be honored and glorified. And all of us together say, Amen. 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 <clears throat> Father, we thank you for the fact that you have provided for us that, that which we can return to you. You have entrusted us as merely stewards. And so we ask that our gifts and our offerings might be for the furthering of the kingdom. And we thank you, Father, for the grace and the mercy to be able to do that. We ask all of this in the powerful, matchless name of our Lord, our Savior and our Redeemer, Christ Jesus, that he might be honored and glorified. And all of us together say, Amen. 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 Praise God, God from whom all blessings, blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him, above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, thank you. Okay. You shouldn't have to wait until something like that happens to get you. Life's too short. Um, I was extremely gratified to have all the family together. All of the family together. But like I said, uh, it was a blessing for all of us to be here in this one place together. But we have to. We have to be able to come together more often as family. Because just because we're here for breakfast doesn't mean that we'll be here for lunch. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> Thank you. And uh, you two come as often as you can. You're always welcome. <clears throat> uh, anybody have any theory that we call the water room? Mm -hmm. When we go in to the water room, we shut everything up. And whether it's five minutes or an hour and a half or more, everybody that we can possibly think of and see in our mind's eye is prayed for. Uh, like just a little while ago, sometimes in that room it gets a little hot. <laughs> but when you wake up from a sound sleep, and, and the house is quiet, so quiet you can hear a cotton ball bounce. <laughs> then you know somebody needs prayer. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to share that with you. Thank you, thank you. Thank Have you ever watched the prayer prayer room? The or I guess it's war room. Mm -hmm. uh, the movie. Oh the movie. yes. The movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. heard it's really good. I want to watch it. Yeah. That's basically where we we decided to do that. I also want to watch the movie. I don't believe in 